to business. Hello again. More almanac pages? Uh, not quite. It's a treatise, actually. Oh? Concerning what? The benefits of taking an older woman as a lover. Really? This I'd like to hear. First and most obvious, they're wiser. And so this makes for far more stimulating conversation. Makes other things more stimulating as well, but more on that in a moment. All right. Your argument for experience makes some sense. Second, when beauty fades, women must improve their utility, lest they be discarded and forgotten. Rare is an old woman who is not also kind, compassionate, and good. That's something of a generalization. But also true. Now, on to the third. Older women cannot conceive, which means one less thing over which to fret. In fact, you also decrease the chance of acquiring something like the French pox, its presence clearly visible, or the woman dead. And should one desire a child? Then make a young woman your wife. Let the older one be a mistress. And that brings me to my fourth point. With age, comes prudence. An older woman is less likely to reveal your indiscretions. Yes. I suppose you know quite a bit about that. And proud of it, thank you. As to the fifth reason, because in every animal that walks upright, the deficiency of the fluids that fill the muscles appears first in the highest part. The face first grows lank and wrinkled, then the neck, then the breast and arms. The lower parts continuing to the last as plump as ever, so that covering all above with a basket, and regarding only what is below the girdle, it is impossible of two women to know an old from a young one. And, as in the dark all cats are grey, the pleasure of corporal enjoyment with an old woman is at least equal and frequently superior, every knack being by practice capable of improvement. You mad bastard! Well... It's true, and believe me, I should know. I've sampled a great many. You should try one as well. Like a fine wine, they only improve with age. Although I suppose if left unattended too long, some have a tendency to sour. And that, my friend, is a most unpleasant experience. Better to work in a field often plowed, you know. Is there more? Indeed, indeed. The sixth is this. The sin is less. To take a maiden head is a great responsibility. Mishandled, it can ruin lives. No such risk with an older woman. And this implies the seventh. Younger women are more given to compunction. Anxiety and unease are not present in the more aged and experienced. And as to the last of my reasons, well, it's really quite simple. Older women are so very grateful for the attention. You make a compelling argument, Mr. Franklin. I might just have to run a few tests myself. I highly recommend it. I owe you a great thanks, by the way. What for? Hmm. Speaking with me. You see, I have very few friends in Boston these days. And what did you do to earn their ire? Started with a cartoon I drew, suggesting unification. How else can we hope to withstand the French menace? I proposed something similar at the Albany Conference as well, and it ruffled quite a few feathers. See, I've begun to wonder if Parliament best serves our interests. The colonies might be better off independent and autonomous. 
Most of my peers, however, haven't taken kindly to the suggestion. Are things truly so bad under the crown? But you've answered your own question. Under. Why under? It should be side by side. Does France reside beneath Britain? Do the Italians? The Prussians? The Spanish? No. Oh, sure, they may disagree from time to time, even come to blows, but they stand on equal ground. And we should as well. Are the colonies not simply an extension of the kingdom, though? Another borough, if you will? No, we are not. We've evolved into something else, something distinct. Hmm. I suppose it's only natural to desire parity. We leave behind our parents, our childhoods, our homes, and seek to find a place in the world. If it's true for a person, why not a nation? Yes, yes, exactly. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. Please, don't let me keep you from your work. Let us speak later, my friend. For the very best in firearms, you need but stop at one expedient location. Murray's has all patterns in stock. All manner of crustacean, live or morning bread. We always touch yours and no one. Perhaps not for long. It seems they've taken it into their heads to take the pieces of a dead of non-conformist fools. We're all terrified. Show some restraint. I need help over here. Everything you could possibly need. Gathered here for you, good folks. I pretend that was an accident. Oh. 
<laughs> if there's anything you need that I don't have, I'll find it for you. Everything you could possibly need. For the widest assortment of dry goods, feed, and other stakes, call upon the good folk of Lock. asks all able-bodied men to give an hour of their labor this Saturday. <laughs> Johnson's told me what you intend. As it happens, the man who held me is the same one that you seek. His name is Silas Thatcher. 
That fancy lad is our slaver? Don't let his velvet tongue deceive you. A crueler and more vicious creature I've never known. What can you tell me of his operation? He hosts at least a hundred men, more than half of whom are redcoats. All this for some slaves? <laughs> Hardly. The man's a commander in the king's troop, in charge of the Southgate Fort. We need to find a way inside. Hmm, let me think on it. In the meantime, I'll attend to our final recruit. John Pitcairn's our man. I'll take you to him. State your business. New recruit. More kindling for the pyre, eh? Well, go on then. How'd you manage that? Did you forget, sir? My commission is with General Braddock. When I'm not attending to you, of course. One good reason. I shouldn't kill you right now. Were you planning to announce yourself? Or did you hope my men Sir, wouldn't notice your if arrival? If you'll allow me to explain. Ho <laughs> ho! By all means. I should like very much to hear this. I have not deserted, sir. I am here under Commander Amherst's orders. Show me a letter bearing his seal, and you might be spared the gallows. I have no such thing. The nature of my work, sir, it's... It's the sort of thing best not put to paper. Hey, them. General Braddock? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Wolves often travel in packs. Master Pitcairn won't be here for but a few weeks. I shall return him to his proper post once our work is finished. The devil's work, no doubt. It's bad enough my superiors have insisted. I grant you use of Charles. But they've said nothing about this traitor. You'll not have him. Edward, listen to reason. We're done here. See these gentlemen out. Well, that didn't go as I expected. And to think I used to call him brother. What now? Well, they'll chase us off if we try and return. We're done with this camp. As luck would have it, so are they. Come along. What are you planning? To steal Master Pitcairn. What? You'll see. Now, when I give the signal, you're to distract Braddock's patrol and lure them into a dead end. Now! Warwick's 
expressing sincere condolences to the Brown family. Oi! Your thieves and scoundrels, one and all! Fire on you and your false war! <laughs> After him! <laughs> Unhand him, Edward. Uh, you again. Let us go. And John Pitcairn with us. I will not have my authority challenged. Nor I. Put them all in chains. Oh, hell. again. All debts will be forgotten. You're free now, John. Traitor! Go on, then. Join them on their fool's errand. And when you find yourself lying... I assume broken, you've good reason for causing all this madness. What is it you require of me? I'll explain everything on the way. You will pay! Don't let 